Hello again, it's Dr. Marty Schreiber. I would like to continue the conversation about optimizing the use of CAPD by talking about infection. Whether a patient utilizes hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis for their ESRD treatment modality, infectious complications are a key driver for hospitalizations and readmissions in the United States. For peritoneal dialysis, peritonitis remains a significant risk for early technique failure. Overall, the DaVita peritonitis rate is approximately one episode in every 49.6 patient months, which is quite good considering the historic peritonitis rates observed throughout the United States over the past decade. Our current DaVita goal is one episode in every 50 patient months, which we are working to achieve across all programs. However, with the continuation of the Baxter Cycler solution shortage. There has been a growing concern expressed by nephrologists and nurses about the potential for increased peritonitis rates in patients on CAPD. The major reasons for this sentiment include a lack of physician and nurse training in CAPD, the multiple exchanges performed by patients throughout the day, a deficit in CAPD training experience, by most new programs and nurses, since the primary modality for most of the patients in the recent past has been cycler therapy, and undervaluing aseptic techniques, especially hand washing. Members of DaVita's clinical education team and the home modality's clinical leadership have begun focusing on re-educating and reprioritizing those specific aspects of training that are critical to lowering peritonitis risk for patients performing CAPD. The training of patients is recognized as a modifiable risk factor for PD peritonitis. Patient training and retraining should become a major focus for all units striving to improve their peritonitis rates. I would ask all medical directors of home PD programs to meet with their nurse trainers and interdisciplinary teams to discuss those specific aspects of training that are critical to the success of CAPD, such as a focus on hand washing, avoiding technique shortcuts, and designation of a proper site for performing exchanges in the workplace as well as at home. Dr. Sharon Neeson from McGill University in Montreal noted several factors that were independently associated with the higher peritonitis rate in a published paper studying Canadian PD patients. These included age, race, and having transferred from in-center hemodialysis. There also was an interaction between gender and diabetes with an increased risk for peritonitis among female patients with diabetes. Recognizing the high-risk patients in every program should be a topic of regular discussion. Dr. Neeson also noted that having a first coagulase-negative staph peritonitis episode was independently associated with an increased risk for a subsequent coag-negative staph peritonitis within one year of the earlier episode. The apparent clustering of peritonitis events should be a concept all medical directors are familiar with and should lead to a better understanding of infection events occurring in their programs. We can cluster peritonitis events into three groups, those patients with zero events, those with one event, and those patients with greater than three episodes. All patients with one or more episodes of peritonitis per year should undergo consideration for formal retraining as a way of lowering the unit's overall peritonitis rate. I also would urge medical directors to review their current peritonitis rates, the percent of cases due to specific organisms, and the findings from a root cause analysis performed on all cases. Discussing peritonitis with the care team is the basis for designing proactive improvement strategies. Several additional steps may also improve peritonitis risk and early technique failure in CAPD patients. These include intravenous antibiotic administration prior to PD catheter insertion, 
Prescribing of oral nystatin or diflucan with any antibiotic course greater than 14 days. The routine application of mupiracin at the exit site or the daily use of genomycin cream at the exit site to reduce both the catheter-associated infection and peritonitis rates. In closing, the keys to achieving a peritonitis-free interval for all CAPD patients is to be proactive, know your data, recognize risk factors for infection, cluster patients into one of three groups, and make retraining part of the standard approach to treating individuals with higher than expected peritonitis events.